Wake up! It's day seven. In Genesis, when Adam fell in the Garden of Eden, when he partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which, by the way, was not an apple tree. It was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. When he partook of that tree, he fell from revelation to information. He fell from drawing from God's revealed wisdom to now living off of what he could see, taste, touch, hear, and smell. He was dominated by the natural. Going from revelation to information was devastating, yet the most devastating part was that he went back to the day in which he came from. He went back to the day in which he was never supposed to live in. Wake up! It's day seven. In Genesis 1, 26, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. In verse 31, it says, God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning, listen to this, were the sixth day, day six. In Genesis 2, verse 7, says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. On what day? Day six. Now look at Genesis 2, 1. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, day seven, God rested. He ended his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day. So here is what Genesis tells us, that God formed man out of the dust, and then he breathed into this man his very life, his spirit, his life force, and man became a living soul, a living being, a spirit, soul, body. All of that came out of day six. His spirit came out of day six. His soul, his mind, his reasoning, his thinking, his will, his emotions came out of day six. And his body came out of day six. Yet, he was never supposed to live and move and work in day six. He was only supposed to live, move, and work inside of day seven. He came out of six, yet he was destined to live in day seven. Day seven represents perfection, wholeness, completion, and rest. Day six represents dust, death, a disconnect from the life of God. So let's look at it in this light. Man in his spirit is in day seven. In his mind, his will, his emotions is in day seven. And his body is in day seven. When man fell, when he partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, when he fell from revelation to information, immediately he fell from day seven in his spirit to now day six, he went back to the day. He went back to a disconnect from the life of God. He went back to the dust because God told him, in the day that you eat of that tree, you will surely die. Now, of course, we know from reading the scriptures, he did not die physically on that day. It took 930 years for his mind to receive what his spirit was giving. Oh man, now this is awesome. Because Adam had to learn how to die. He didn't know how to die. Adam had to learn how to die. You know, when we're born again, we have to learn how to live. We have to learn, our mind has to elevate to what our spirit 
is releasing. You know, nobody ever gave Adam black balloons on his 40th birthday that said over the hill. When he turned 50, he didn't start seeing commercials with aches and pains and joints and arthritis when he was 60. Nobody ever told him, now you need to prepare for Social Security, start living off the government. He did not know how to die. So it took his mind 930 years to receive and speak what his spirit was releasing on the day he fell. And as he began to speak that forth, his body received it and death came. So here's what I want you to see. Notice this. The day he was created to live in was day seven. But on the day he partook of the tree of the knowledge, immediately he fell from a 777 to a 677 to eventually from a 677 to a 666. Six, six. Wow. I'm pausing for dramatic effect, all right? I want this to sink down deep into your thinking, into your consciousness, because so many of us, we've been looking for a hand stamp. We've been looking for a forehead stamp. When, ladies and gentlemen, there are millions right now on our planet that are working in a day and they're thinking in a day in which they were never created to live in. Day six. That's the day that represents dust, uh, death, a disconnect from the life of God. We have millions of people working in a system of death and thinking in a system of death. Why? Because their spirit is still locked inside of a day they were never created to live in. Wake up! It's day seven. So when we're born again, we go from day six in our spirit, day six in our mind, day six in our body, we go from a six, six, six to a seven, six, six. Our spirit comes alive once again with the breath of God, the Holy Spirit, the same power that raised Christ from the dead hits our spirit and we once again awaken to the day in which we were created to live. Now we have to renew our mind out of the pattern or out of the system of death and into a new day. And as our mind elevates and awakens to the day that's already a reality in our spirit, then our body begins to release life, health, provision, wealth. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. The prophet told Naaman, dip seven times. Why seven? Because day seven represents God's divine health. God told the children of Israel, march around the walls of Jericho, not six days, but seven days. Day seven represents our authority. We can rule and Rain. Do you remember the woman at the well? She had been married five times. Five is the number of grace. And then the man she was living with was not her husband. So the sixth man, she had settled for a lesser identity. She had settled for a fallen identity. But here came the seventh man. <laughs> Thank you. Jesus, and it was the seventh man that delivered her from the sixth. Then there was a lady who was bent over, bowed over for 18 years. What is 18? Six plus six plus six. All she could see was dust, and that dust was a constant reminder of a day in which she was not supposed to live in. So her mind was trapped inside of day six, dust, death, a disconnect from the life of God. Her body was expressing that day. 
But one day in the temple, day seven showed up. <laughs> and day seven said, shouldn't this daughter of Abraham be loosed from this infirmity? Now do you understand what the scripture is meaning when it says, this is the day that the Lord has made? He's not talking about a 24-hour Gregorian calendar day. He's talking about the day Jesus made when Jesus hung on the cross and he cried, it is finished. A new day dawned <laughs> for you and for me. Jesus brought us back to the day in which we were destined to live. He brought us back to perfection, back to wholeness, back to completion, and back to rest. Wake up! It's day seven. And that's all I have to say about that.